Dying Light the Beast is finally here, and to no one's surprise, the developers did something very controversial last minute, because these things are to be expected nowadays, unfortunately. If you didn't know, the game was promoted to feature ray tracing, but it was pulled last minute before release. Here is what the devs have to say, quote, To deliver the highest possible quality and stability at launch, we have decided to temporarily disable ray tracing while we finalize some last minute optimizations. This is a top priority for our team and we are working to enable it as quickly as possible after release. End quote. This honestly feels more like a bait and switch to prevent backlash about bad performance at launch, just like recent game releases, such as Borderlands 4 FPS, and Metal Gear Solid Delta Frame Eater, and most likely, there wasn't anything that actually needed fixing. But this is just my opinion, with no facts or proof. I could be wrong, but then again, here is why I think what I think. If you actually look at the game using max settings, there is almost no shading in most areas. It looks flatter than my ass, and that's saying a lot, since my ass is as flat as a pancake. But don't worry, I plan on covering the ray tracing update when it comes out, so subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss it. Now that I finished my mini rant, let's start with the CPU performance. I tried to bottleneck my old R5 3600X CPU, but I still wasn't able to. Frame rates reached around 70 FPS before I was GPU limited, and CPU usage averaged in the mid 60% and it was really stable and frame times were silky smooth, even the 1% lows are high compared to the recent games, and it looks like there is still room for more FPS if your GPU can handle it. So if you have a low end or old CPU like me, rest assured that you can achieve a high refresh rate experience at not just 60 FPS, but constantly over it. Before moving on to upscaling, the game offers multiple versions of FSR. What shows up are versions 2.3.4 and 3.1.5. The older version can look sharper in stills and has better image stability in scenes with alpha effects, such as the smoke from this fire. However, in motion, while the newer version looks blurrier overall, it has slightly better image stability in general. In stills, native TAAU has a hard time dealing with aliasing and alpha effects. FSR3 has a softer overall image and is even less stable when dealing with alpha effects as the shimmering is very apparent. XESS has the softest and blurriest image out of all of the upscalers, but handles the shimmering a bit better than FSR3. DLSS on the other hand handles this area the best as if it isn't really breaking a sweat, and the image softness is the same as native TAAU, so no extra blurriness. As for ghosting and artifacting during motion, other than native TAAU, which has very strong ghosting, the other upscalers are all relatively the same, and no easy visible difference is apparent from my testing, other than the fact that the overall image is sharper in motion using DLSS. If you have a relatively new GPU, you should enable asynchronous compute for free FPS. Just test it out for yourself, and if you have more FPS with this setting, keep it on. The texture quality setting only has two options, but at least they actually make a difference, both in texture resolution and VRAM usage. It appears that almost all textures are affected by this setting. The LOD quality setting has a subtle impact to the level of detail, as the objects it affects are a bit into the distance, but thankfully, its performance impact is very small, so keep it on high. The draw distance multiplier is currently the most demanding setting in the game. The default values are 100 up to medium, and 140 when using high. The higher values are there just as an extra. This setting makes a significant difference to the overall quality of the game's environment. Just keep it at 140 for the best balance. 
The particles quality setting is supposed to control the quality of things like fire, smoke, rain, etc. But in my testing, I haven't found any image quality or performance differences in these aspects or others. The shadows quality setting gradually and subtly improves shadow quality and most noticeably shadow filtering with each option. The difference is very hard to notice between medium and high and since high has a bigger performance impact, I recommend medium for the best balance. The screen space shadow setting adds shadows to some specific objects in the environment. It looks nice and doesn't seem to affect performance. Keep it on. Ambient occlusion is much needed in this game, especially since ray tracing isn't implemented yet, and the game looks very flat as is. Even on high, it still isn't able to improve the overall shading of the game on its own. Therefore, I still recommend keeping it on high. Thankfully, its performance cost is minimal. The global illumination quality setting has a very subtle impact and its effect changes quickly which made recording a comparison even harder since it is also affected by the time of day. Performance wise, it depends on the scene. I found that high can sometimes have a slightly noticeable impact, so use medium for the best balance. The reflections quality setting doesn't affect most surfaces noticeably. This is the only surface where I found it made an actually noticeable difference. Low and medium seem to look the same, while high increases reflection resolution. And since its cost is minuscule, keep it on high. The fog quality setting seems to mostly, if not only, affect interiors. And even then, the difference is very hard to notice because I wasn't able to find any scene where there was a noticeable improvement, just this one, and as I said, it only looks different. This setting has no noticeable impact to any of the outdoor effects like clouds or fog. Its performance impact is small but measurable, so keep it on medium to be safe. The post-process quality setting doesn't behave like it should, instead, the only difference it made was in this area, where it somehow alters the shading on these pillars. And yes, I don't know what's going on, but I'm just relaying my findings. As it doesn't have any measurable impact to FPS, keep it on high. Here are the optimized settings. If you enjoy my work and would like to support me directly, you can do so through my Patreon page, where in return, you get to download and watch my optimization guide videos like this one without the YouTube compression. Now for the optimized settings. But first, let's start by taking a quick look at the max settings using the draw distance multiplier maxed out and when it is set to the default high value of 140, just to be fair before comparing it to the optimized settings. And it looks like the frame rate increased from around 19 to 28 FPS on average. Now, let's compare this result to the optimized settings while still at native 1440p, in which the frame rate increased by a whopping 1 FPS on average. Wow, I did not expect this. So, after all of this hard work, going from the high preset to the optimized settings basically gives us no tangible performance improvements. So, this only leaves us upscaling if we want to increase frame rates in which using DLSS quality increases the average FPS from 30 to 45. Wow, I'm still surprised that this game, while generally well optimized, basically has zero scalability, even with the decent amount of settings it offers. What do you guys think about all of this? Tell us in the comments.